Hey friends, so now we're gonna talk about something that you're gonna do always at the start in Power BI is connecting your data. And we're gonna cover four types of connections, import, dark query, live connection, and dual. Now, this might feel like small topic, but actually it is very important one because this can affect everything later. The performance, the refresh, the moduling, and even the behavior of your visuals. And that's why we're gonna deep dive into these topics. So now, let's go. The first thing that I want you to understand is how these things things works behind the scenes. That's why we're gonna sketch now a high level architecture of Power BI but without going in details. The first thing that we have is the source of your data. This is where your data actually lives. You could have files like CSV, Excel, or your data could be in databases like SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres SQL, or something modern like Databricks, or your data could come from web ABIs. This is the original source of your data and everything lives completely outside of of Power BI. Now the next thing we're gonna have Power BI desktop and to make things easier we're gonna split it into three main parts. The first one is the data layer. This is raw data that Power BI brings in from the sources so it's just like a local copy of your data. The next one is the model layer or data model. This is where you describe and organize your data. So you can have the tables, the columns, and how the tables are related to each other's, and maybe some calculations on top of the data. So it's just like structure, a description of your data, but not the data itself. And the last one is the visual layer. This is where you build your reports, the chart, tables, slicers, buttons, so all the visual stuff. And of course, those three types always work together. Like for example, if you create a new visual or you are interacting with with it. Power BI is gonna send a request to the model in order to get the data. The model is gonna prepare the final result and send it back to the visual. So there is like a flow and everything is interacting together. Now by looking to this picture it is clearly we have two words. We have the source of your data, the original data, and the other side we have Power BI. And for Power BI to do anything it needs data. And that's why we need to build like a connection between Power BI and the source of the data. And depend on the type of the source we have here few options. If you are connecting completely new data source, you have import, direct query, and dual. So three options, but we have as well fourth special connection. This is when you are connecting Power BI to reuse something that already exists in the Power BI service. For this scenario, we can use the live connection. So this is the high level architecture, the blueprint that we're gonna use in order to understand how things works. So now we're gonna start learning how to connect a new source to Power BI. And here we're gonna focus on the two most important important connection types, the import and the direct query. The dual one is not that important, so that's why we're gonna do it quickly later. So now let's start with the first connection type, the import. Let's go. Alright, the first question is what is import? Import is a connection type and when you use it, Power BI is gonna take its own copy of your data and load it inside Power BI file. This copy of your data is gonna be used for the visuals and for the next steps. So now let's understand exactly what this means. Now let's say that your data lives inside files like CSV, Excel, JSON or text files and you would like to use Power BI to analyze the data inside those files. So you're gonna tell Power BI to connect to your files and load them. So Power BI is gonna go and establish connection to those files. It's gonna start reading its structure, the columns, the data type, and then it's gonna start extracting and pulling the data, the values, out of the files and copy the whole thing inside the data layer inside Power BI. So that means Power BI is gonna store a full copy of your data locally inside the Power BI file. And after that, you start building the data model to organize and describe your data. And finally, you're gonna build the visuals on top of it. But now, now, if you take a look to the picture again, there is something really important to understand. Your data is now duplicated. It exists in two places. Your data outside Power BI in the original files and as well you have now another copy inside Power BI. So now the question is when you see data in the visuals, where does it come from? Is it from the files or from the local copy inside Power BI? Well, since we are using import mode, Power BI does not go back to the source of the files. Everything gonna stay inside Power BI. 
API. So for example, if you create a new visual or you are interacting with it, probably I'm going to send a request to the model. And now the model is going to go and access the local copy of your data inside Power BI. And then in order to get data, and once it gets its value, it's going to prepare it and then send it back to the visual. So that means the whole interaction is going to happen inside Power BI and nothing going to go outside. So that means the whole interaction and communication is happening inside Power BI. Nothing goes outside. So my friends, this is exactly what's going to happen behind the scenes if you are using import mode. Now let's go back to Power BI and try this out. All right. Now, if you go to the course materials, you're going to find the data sets and inside it, there is a folder called connection types. If you go inside it, you're going to find a few files that I have prepared in order to try the different types of connections. So we have text, Excel, JSON, SQL, and a folder full of CSVs. So now what you're going to do, we're going to go and connect one of them like the Excel file. And if you go inside it, you're going to find two tabs, one for the customers and another one for the products. So now I would like to analyze those informations inside Power BI, not here in Excel. That means we have to go and connect those data to Power BI. Let's do that. We're going to start with a blank empty reports. And then we're going to go to the toolbar over here, get data. And the first one going to be Excel. So let's click on that. Then we have to navigate to the files and we're going to pick our Excel file. So let's go and click open. Now what happened here is that Power BI connected to our files. Nothing is loaded yet. It is just grabbing, let's say, the structure of the Excel and few data in order to preview it. So this is just a pre-step before we load anything. Now you can see on the left side, we have the structure of the Excel. So we have the two tabs. If you click on it, you're going to see here a preview of the data for the customers and for the products. If you think everything is fine, what you're going to do, we're going to select them and then take an action. And here we have like two actions, transform data. This we're going to explain later how to do those stuff. Now we are talking about how to load data. And here it is very important to understand that, that if you are connecting files to Power BI, you have only one option to import the data. So you cannot establish any other type like a live connection to the Excel file. The only thing that we can do is to load it inside Power BI. Let's go and do that. So we're going to go and click on load. Now what is happening here is Power BI is just moving and loading your data inside Power BI in order to have its own local copy. So now my data is inside this file inside the desktop. Now what we're going to do, we're going to go through all the views in order to see what happens. So let's start with the model view. Now you can see we have like two tables for the customers and the products. Those are the two tabs in Excel. And you can see there is a nice icon here like a storage. This indicates that this table is using the import mode. And as we hover, you can see it. It says storage mode is import. So this is really nice in order to understand immediately. I'm working with an import. Now go and click on one of them and then go to properties then if you scroll down you can see here advanced option so extend it and you can see the storage mode is import and i cannot change that so it is grayed out so now i would say that's all for this view let's go to the table view so now it is very important to understand the data that you are seeing here in the table view it comes from the local copy inside power bi not from your excel anymore there is no more connections to your files so you can check and browse and then we go to the last tab to the view at the right side you can see we have our tables and now what we can do we can for example build a visual like the bar chart so let's grab the levels of the customers and the customer id to the other axis so that i can see customers by levels and i'm gonna go and put the numbers on top of the bars so let's go and format the visuals and activate the data labels so with this you can see we have two customers at the level silver one bronze one gold and one platinum now the issue here is that over the time your data change so you might have new customers or you delete some customers or some updates now we have here of course a big issue the data that i'm using inside power bi they are outdated and my analysis are based on an old data not on the new change data inside the files because import will not keep updating itself and of course doing analysis on outdated data it is not something nice so now how are we gonna solve this for the import we have another process called the refresh process so what is that okay let's have a look again to the high level architecture as we learned with the import mode everything gonna happen inside power bi and it doesn't need to go to the external sources until you trigger the refresh process this is the only moment where power bi has to go back so now during the refresh power bi has to repeat the whole import process that means power bi has to go and connect again to the original file and again start reading everything the rows the columns the structure 
structure and then start copying and moving everything inside Power BI. So with that, we have now two copies of your data, an old one and fresh new one. And of course, now Power BI is going to go and wipe out everything from the old copy and replace it entirely with the new copy. So with that, the refresh process is completed and the next layer, the model and the visuals can work now with brand new fresh data. So this is exactly what we mean with the refresh process. Okay, so now in order to do that, let's go back to our Excel and let's do a few changes. Like for example, I'm going to go and change the loyalty level for the customer one. We're going to make it gold and same thing for the last customer. We're going to make it as well gold. So with that, we have three gold customers and we don't have any more the level of silver and don't forget to save. So now let's go back to Power BI. So now keep looking at those visuals and click on refresh. Look at this, something changed, right? Now, if you look to the bar chart, we have three gold customers and we don't have any more silver. The same thing goes as well for the pie chart. Now I have more up to date data. And of course this went very fast, but if you have large tables and you have a lot of calculations, this might take few minutes. So this is one drawback of the import. If you have data and things changed in the original source system, then you have to go and refresh here the data manually. So this is the drawback of the import. If things change in the original source system, like the Excel files, you have to go and click over here and refresh your data. And now, of course, as the developers in the Power BI desktop, we are refreshing things manually. But as you move things to the service, you can automate it where you create a scheduler, for example, twice a day or something like that in order to refresh the data from the sources by loading it from there into Power BI service. So we can automate the whole thing without you manually clicking on refresh. So this is the import mode and as well the refresh process.